Phil Connors? It's Groundhog Day. Uh, so Groundhog Day, if you don't know, I mean, I, I should be careful about spoilers. I know this movie came out in 1993, but I've been called out about it before. Um, Groundhog Day is the story of a man. There's no way to talk about this movie without revealing some spoilers. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Groundhog Day is 1993 film starring Bill Murray and Andy McDowell. Wonderful movie. A wonderful movie, life-affirming comedy um, about a man attempting to commit suicide for 10,000 years. This movie uh, is loved by so many people. Um, Bill Murray plays a, uh, a TV reporter who is sent uh, to Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania to cover Groundhog Day. The day uh, in which the groundhog, Punxsutawney Phil, emerges from his hole in the ground. Uh, and how do they guarantee he's going to come out of the hole in the ground? Do they, like, use a cattle prod? And as we all know on Groundhog Day, if Punxsutawney Phil sees his shadow and runs back into the hole because he's scared, we get six more weeks of winter. And if he doesn't, spring is on the way. Andy McDowell plays Rita, um, a co-worker of Phil's who cannot stand him. Um, and because of a bizarre twist of fate in which Phil Connors, played by Bill Murray, is trapped in time for an indeterminate amount of period of time, repeating the same day again and 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 again. He is able to win over Andy McDowell's character. I gotta go. Phil, that was surprising. I didn't know you were so versatile. I surprise myself sometimes. Thus break himself from the time trap. It's kind of creepy, like this dude just basically spends 10,000 years, like, learning every secret about her and using them to his advantage. Ugh. It's a little bit weird. We're probably not going to use that in the regular cut. And so, um, what we learn about her, we learn everything about her, because that is what he must do in the course of the film to overcome his, I guess, narcissism is the idea, right? Like, he has to care about somebody else. So, Annie McDowell's favorite drink in the movie is a sweet vermouth on the rocks with a twist. So we're going to make that, but that's not really a cocktail. So I'm also going to make a drink I have invented to go with the film called the Punxsutawney's Liquid Courage, guaranteed to spruce up the old guy and make sure spring comes around. This ice cube doesn't really fit in the glass. I have a couple of options. I could spin it down, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to shave it. I'm just going to cut this into something more trapezoidal. I'm not doing a very good job of it, but hand-carved ice is a staple of high-end Japanese bartending. Um, they make all kinds of crazy shapes, diamonds and, and whatever, and they put it in your glass. Seems a little overkill, but in my case, there we go. I'm going to pour a three ounce pour of vermouth over this ice cube. Most of that went in the glass. There we go. I mean, I could have free poured that very easily, but I'd like to know what's in the glass, right? And um, I'm going to give this an orange twist. Nice fat peel of orange there. Give it a spritz. Oh yeah, plenty of oils. Really wring it out over the top there. Trace the glass, drop it in. The vermouth I'm using is Carpana Antica. Um, there's a lot of vermouths out there. I think that when I'm drinking a vermouth on the rocks on its own, I really like the body that Carpano, um, that the Antica provides. It's a, it's a really delicious, um, I mean, it's, it's what I want my sweet vermouth to taste like. Let's give it a sample. It's so good. It is so good. It's like all of all of the savory notes in a Coca-Cola. If you could imagine taking all the sugar out of Coca-Cola, that's kind of what it tastes like, or at least my imagination of what a Coca-Cola tastes like. It's these um, cloves and anise and the orange and the bitter oranges and... Mmm. Ugh, you just melt in that. It's so delicious. It is, I mean, it's kind of candy-like. It's very sweet, but it's not bad at all. And so, that's the sweet vermouth on the rocks. Not much to that, not much of a cocktail at all. So let's let's give this other idea I had a try. The Punxsutawney's Liquid Courage. So this is a pretty simple mix. It's gonna be a 50-50 mix of the sweet vermouth. We're gonna do a one and a half ounce pour of sweet vermouth. and a one and a half ounce pour of Laird's Bonded Applejack. Um, Applejack is a distillate of apples. Okay, so here's where we get into the naming conventions that Laird's uses. Laird's actually calls this straight apple brandy. 
If you buy the bottle from Laird's that looks a little different and says Apple Jack on it, about 30% of what's in there is gonna be neutral grain spirits. Um, the straight apple brandy is nothing but distilled apples, and the bonded is what you really want. Bottled and bond means that the beverage in it has to be the product of one harvests, one year of harvest uh, uh, fermentables. So one, it's the apples of one year, so to speak. Uh, but bottled and bond with whiskey or something like that would be one year's worth of those grains. Um, and then it has to be aged for four years and it has to be at 100 proof. Um, essentially, if, uh, if a spirit company sells something bottled in bond, it's generally a mark of excellent quality and it's the one to buy. For a long time, because of an apple blight, Laird's had a problem producing bottled in bond. Um, and I think for like six or seven years, you couldn't get this. And this is actually the first bottle I've seen on shelves in a while. So I snatched it when I did, it was just the other day. I'm gonna put in two dashes of Angostura bitters here. Two nice dashes. I'm gonna stir this on cracked ice. I wanna pour this over a big rock as well. I don't want these to look exactly the same, so I think I'm gonna garnish this one a little bit differently. Um, however, I still want that twist on top, right? So I'm gonna pull a twist here, although this is from a different orange, this is from a blood orange. Get that. We'll lose this. We're not gonna use it. And now I wanna make a wedge. I love this color, it's gonna mirror the drink so well. And there we have Punxsutawney Phil's Liquid Courage and a vermouth on the rocks. Let's try this Punxsutawney Phil. Great orangey nose, oh man. Yeah, I like that a lot. Hell yeah. Hell yeah! That is a wonderful drink. That is just the right amount of sweet and plenty of apple spirit. You get that essence all throughout and it's kind of, I talk a lot about the, the evolution of a flavor profile. And what's cool is when you get kind of like two notes at once, right? So you get these notes that come in and go, but then all throughout you have this other note. The apple essence is in there the whole time, okay? And so the first thing we get, hold on. A little bit of bite right up front. Clove, cinnamon, apple essence, and anise, and yeah, like, the wormwood bitter from the vermouth essence and then apples and then just oh man that's freaking cool it's got a really cool evolution <sighs> i'm into this drink i think that if i had to spend ten thousand years as many a, a fan of the movie believes phil had to spend to learn to play the piano and learn to be a better human um i think that i would go with this to uh help me along I don't know if that would be cutting the mustard. Maybe not every day. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's so good. Oh, so just a few more facts about the movie while we're still here. Directed by Harold Ramis, Bill Murray's co-star in Ghostbusters, also known as Egon. Bill and Harold were partnered for a long time. They did a lot of movies together as a acting duo, as a director and actor duo, as a writer, director, actor duo. They're in, they're in Stripes together. Yeah, John Candy's in Stripes too, of course. He's part of that, that, that whole crew. <laughs> I love Stripes growing up. So, <laughs> this is a funny thing about Stripes. Uh, stripes, uh, not this movie, but that's okay. We'll talk about Stripes for a minute, you know. Um, I, I really thought I was, as a child, as an 11 year old boy, 12 year old maybe, I always thought I was really getting away with something whenever I got to watch Stripes. There was something really, sexual about stripes and particularly the scene where he's uh she's sitting on like a stove or a counter and he's like he's got like a a spatula like he, she's like eggs or whatever in my brain i just thought like oh man this is some kinky stuff that like shouldn't be in this movie this spatula fetish like i just assumed as an 11 year old that that was a thing and that i was getting away watching this movie um not just them horsing around on set 
uh, as it actually probably was. I don't know, is that a thing? Is spatula a thing? Is that a thing that I'm missing out on still and I just don't know? Spatula City! Spatula City! What's your favorite sip in vermouth? That's a great question. I'd love to know if you're having a vermouth on the rocks, where do you go with it? Is it a Punta Mez? Is it a, uh, the Carpano? Is that the way? A Dolan? That's how to drink. Hope you liked the show, and if you did, uh, please subscribe. I am on Twitter at how to drink with a number. I'm on Instagram on how to drink with a number in there. It's the same handle. Uh, I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. If you like the show, check it out right now, literally right this second while I'm filming it. I am live streaming the Patreon, the actual shoot. It's pretty cool. Uh, so if you're into that kind of thing, swing on by the Patreon and uh, check that out. Thanks for watching, guys. That's how to drink. I will see you guys next week with another cocktail. Good night. Okay, so... Um, What's next on the list? It says Groundhog Day. We're just doing that one again. That's probably really not funny. <laughs>